Dr. Paul here. I've got a little one struggling to breathe a bit. Let's go take a look. Hello. Oh, you don't look like you're feeling too good. There we go. Because then we can kind of watch his breathing. Mm -hmm. One of the things we look at is his ribs. And when he takes a breath, you kind of see the ribs show up. Just get to see the ribs show up a little bit with each breath. Not too bad. And then we can count how fast he's breathing just by watching his tummy. So it's one, two, three, four. It's not too bad. Okay. And then just looking at your face, you don't look like you feel too good. No, he doesn't. What's the story here? Well, it's been about four days that he has fever. Uh -huh. And um, just really having a hard time breathing. Yeah. And he's, today he vomited of coughing. Coughing so much. Cough, he vomited. cough, cough, and then vomit. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, my concern was that niece and nephew were in the ICU for RSV. Wow, how and long so, ago? Um, they just got out yesterday. They were there for about three days. How old are the niece and nephew? Uh, one and two. Ah, okay. And so they spent a lot of time together. And so I was just concerned that, um, that he didn't get infected as well. Right. Yep. And of course, you know, he just looks sad. He does. With sad eyes. He must not have slept too well last night. No, he doesn't sleep very well with the coughing. <coughs> So, what I'm hearing mm -hmm. when I listen mm -hmm. is um, he breathes air in okay, but mm -hmm. when he exhales, it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of a squeaky exhale. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit of a wheeze. Okay. He's wheezing enough that I'm not sure if he also has a touch of pneumonia or not. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're going to swab his nose for mm -hmm. RSV and the flu. Those are the okay. two most common things going around. Okay. If both of those happen to be negative, we'll check for whooping cough as well. Okay. So the nurses are going to go in and swab his nose for RSV and the flu, and we're going to also set up a NEB treatment with albuterol, just see if we can get those lungs to open up, and that'll both help him breathe better, and we can hear better whether or not he's got pneumonia. Oh, honey, it's okay. Okay, the NEB treatment's over. We're gonna go recheck that pulse ox, oxygenation. We like to see it above, well, it'd be nice if it was above 95, but just above 90 would be great. All right. I just wanted you guys to see how much just one treatment, what a difference it makes. This guy's breathing finally for the first time in a few hours. And um, yeah, there you go. Finger while he's sleeping. You know, he's breathing better. Mm -hmm. So we can see his heart rate's 164, his oxygen's 91, even though he's breathing better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when it's below 90, then those are kids who usually have to be in the hospital. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna listen to him, you'll be quiet. <laughs>
So you can tell, just even for the viewers who are watching this, the, the breathing is just calmer, mm -hmm. you know, than when you first got here. Mm -hmm. And when I listen to the lungs, there's a little more air moving, mm -hmm. a little less wheeze. So that's good. He, uh -huh. He'll be able to go home. We're going to, do you have a nebulizer at home? No, I just have the humidifier. Okay. The We're going to arrange for you to have a machine at home. Okay. So you can actually do these breathing treatments every four hours at home. We did his nose swab. It turned out it was RSV. Oh. Yeah. Now you don't need to panic because okay. you were just at the hospital with them. Um, they were younger. Uh, yes. Okay. Remember, uh, like, if this age group yeah. and us, RSV is just a bad cold. Okay. Because you get to a infant, so less than a year old, mm -hmm. it's often a little more severe, like yeah. what you experienced with his nephews. Um, it's highly unlikely that he would need to be in the hospital. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's pretty unlikely. Now he got here. I was like, oh, we'll see how this goes, right? Yes. It kind of depends whether he responds to the nebulizer or not. Okay. The younger you are, the less response you have. Mm -hmm. So what albuterol, the medicine that was in the nebulizer, does is it relaxes the muscle that's around the airways. Okay. The little tiny airways have muscle, and they'll spasm mm -hmm. to a trigger like an infection, like mm -hmm. RSV, or if you have asthma, other things can trigger that. Okay. And the albuterol relaxes that muscle, so it's allowing him to move air better. You can see he's breathing a yeah. little calmer. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do those breathing treatments at home every four hours. Every four hours. Okay. How are you going to know if it's bad enough for him mm -hmm. to go to the hospital? Mm -hmm. That's the important thing you need to understand. And for the viewers, if you have a child who's you know, working hard to breathe, uh, and whether or not it's RSV bronchiolitis, which is what he has, or if he's just having, kids might have pneumonia, or they might have uh, the flu, mm -hmm. they might have whooping cough, um, whatever they might have, uh, it's a good idea to be watching how fast your child is breathing. So little kids from infants all the way up to age three, four, five, six, if they're breathing one breath per second, one, one thousand, two, and they're probably getting close to being in trouble with oxygen. Yeah. So when he got here, he was breathing, I think, about 40s, maybe 50 times per minute when we were first watching it. Now it's like one, two, yeah, it looks better. Three, you see that? That's more like mm. 30, 25, okay. 30 respiratory. So his oxygen, you, you can know it's okay. It was a little worse, I think, because he's so, he's so exhausted that he's sleeping through all this right yeah. now. Yeah. Finally, he's moving enough air that he's just like, he was probably up all night, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. in a sense, yeah. having a hard time he breathing. Hasn't slept all day today. Hasn't slept all day, mm -hmm. hasn't eaten or drank much because yeah. he was just needed to breathe. Yeah. So you're going to want to hydrate him. Okay. When any chance he's willing and able, just let him drink, let him eat. Um, you're going to watch for him, you know, seeming to struggle to breathe. Obviously, nice. you go to the emergency room if it's in the middle of the night. Okay. But you're gonna have a machine to treat him with. Okay. If if you're in doubt, just take him because mm -hmm. you know he's. You already know he's pretty sick. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but I think he's gonna be fine. Okay. If tomorrow he's no better, mm -hmm. come back because mm -hmm. we can check his oxygen. We can reevaluate, right? And how about the what about the cough? Cough. So the cough <coughs> is just a reflection of that tightness uh, plus the infection. So RSV okay. can cause wheezing and it can also cause pneumonia. I didn't hear him worse when I just listened after the treatment, but yeah, he's, he's probably still gonna be coughing hopefully a little bit less. Okay. Okay. And generally we do albuterol treatments. When you blow it by like that, cause you know, he, he didn't tolerate the mask. Yeah. So we're just sort of blowing at him. He's only getting some of it. For the viewers, it's every four hours, and that's the standard advice. For anybody that's watching, the reason you don't want to overdo albuterol is it has a side effect of also increasing your heart rate. Mm. And if the yeah. heart beats too fast, you're not moving oxygen properly because it's yeah. just shooting. It, it's not pumping blood properly through the lungs where you get your oxygen into the blood. So that's a, an important thing to know. If you have a really severe case, then 
the treatment is just supporting the child with a little oxygen. So you were mm -hmm. you were describing the little nasal cannula, mm -hmm. with a little oxygen flowing in, just till this infection goes away yeah. and okay. gets good enough that they can move enough oxygen. Yes. There's really no, you can't use antibiotics for viruses. This is a virus, respiratory yeah. syncytial virus, RSV. Number one cause of what we call bronchiolitis, which is sort of a wheezing illness triggered by this viral infection. Okay. All right. Okay. So he looks so much more peaceful yeah, at this he point. Does. Okay. Thank you very much for letting us. I think this will be very instructive for people. It's oh, be yeah. very helpful Thank for you. people. Yeah. And Thank to you. my viewers, a big thumbs up for this amazing family willing to let you guys learn from their experience. And thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Paul.